Hey everyone, welcome to Neuropod, a channel about all things related to the Elon Musk company, Neuralink. My name is Ryan Tanaka, and here's the outline for this update episode. First, we'll discuss a post where one of the original founders and former president of Neuralink, Max Hodak, unfortunately says that multiple sclerosis, or MS, is not a good fit for an electrical implant. Then, Elon responded to a tweet indicating how Neuralink fits into the larger consumer tech revolution currently underway. We'll discuss some brain computer interface progress made by Facebook, followed by an update on what Max Hodak is working on since he and Neuralink parted ways in April. Then we'll finish on a lighter subject because SpaceX is not the only Elon company with a cool place to grab drinks. Elon showed a sneak peek of Neuralink's cyberpunk inspired bar. In a recent tweet, John Levty asked former Neuralink president Max Hodak about implants for diseases like multiple sclerosis. Max responds by saying, quote, MS happens when your immune system starts attacking cells that produce electrical insulation around neurons. Not a good fit for an electrical implant. Need to address at the immune system or by somehow making the insulating cells resistant, unquote. For those of you who are new to our channel or otherwise need a reminder, Neuralink is working on solving important brain and spine problems with a seamlessly implanted device. In order to do this, they're working on surgically implanting electrodes right near various neuron clusters. This will allow them to read the electric signals and then correlate them to various thoughts or movements. They're also working on sending information back into the brain. And since Neuralink is working on an electrical implant, it's unfortunately unlikely that they'll be able to address MS. Some of the problems they're looking to address, however, include memory loss, hearing loss, blindness, paralysis, depression, addiction, and strokes. In an interview with Joe Rogan from last year, Elon even went on to elaborate on how Neuralink could help paralyze patients. Listen to this clip. That, that it, it could, in principle, fix almost anything that is wrong with the brain. Um, and it, it could, it could um, restore uh, limb functionality, so if you've got uh, interface into the motor cortex and then an implant that's say uh, that's like a microcontroller uh, in, in your muscle groups uh, you, you could then create a sort of a neural shunt that restores somebody who is a quadriplegic to full functionality like they can walk around be normal. Elon has emphasized some of these goals are years away but the team is working hard to make progress and I hope you can tell why I'm extremely excited about the future of Neuralink. Next, Elon tweeted a response to a quick animation tweeted by Vala Afshar. The animation shows a variety of older tools spread across a desk. They include a landline telephone, a newspaper, Polaroid camera, and something that looks like it's a fax machine, but who knows. The animation shows all of these desk items consolidating into one small device. It seems to imply that the functionality of our computers could eventually fit into our sunglasses. And Elon responds to this tweet animation by saying, even smaller to a Neuralink chip. It's very cool to see how simple things like the old paper wall calendar are now so integrated into our computers. Likewise, it's no longer necessary to have a physical globe because Google Maps can give us most of the useful information we need on a daily basis. All these technological advances seem to have happened simultaneously. But when looking back on the past 20 to 30 years, it feels like it happened so quickly. And at the same time, the progress felt slow while living through it. And I personally believe that this is how we'll feel about Neuralink and other brain machine interface companies as well. 20 to 30 years from now, it'll feel like there was rapid progress, but living through it, we'll have to keep up with the news via channels like Neuropod and we may actually even want things to go faster. So stated a little differently, Neuralink and other companies are working to make the progress as quick as they can, yet for those who are keeping track of that progress, it's not very easy to remain patient. Another takeaway from this animation is that newer tech does not always mean better tech. For example, the Polaroid camera has been staging a mini comeback. Some people like being able to immediately access a physical copy of a picture and others are just part of the retro trend. Similarly, I know many people who still keep a physical paper wall calendar, despite knowing the advantages of having the digital calendar synced to our phones. 
In the future, there could be a hybrid, a physical digital wall calendar that synchronizes with our phones. Although it's a different type of technological advancement, the same type of thing is probably going to occur in the brain machine interface space. And it's up to the companies to determine which products and services will provide the most usefulness for society at that given time. New startups and established companies like Google, Apple, Amazon, Snap, Microsoft, and Facebook have explored augmented and virtual reality projects. So the next logical step for them is to commit to brain machine interfaces. Also, keep in mind, I've only listed major companies in the United States. There are tech giants around the world that will also probably play in this space in the future. Facebook has already started working on various devices that you can wear on your eyes, hands, or head. In an article recently published by Tech at Facebook, the team discusses the road ahead, writing, quote, We want to continue supporting the exploration of head-mounted optical BCI technologies, that our external collaborators are developing, even as we focus on wrist-based input devices for AR and VR internally at Facebook Reality Labs, unquote. They also share that they've developed, quote, a wearable prototype that uses near-infrared light to measure blood oxygenation in the brain from outside the body and indirectly measure brain activity in a safe, non-invasive way, unquote. And does that sound familiar? It's the non-invasive approach that Kernel is also taking with their headset product, Flow. Stay tuned for our company spotlight episode highlighting the work that Kernel is doing. It's quite interesting to follow their progress. And Kernel founder Brian Johnson and Elon talked about how Elon was potentially joining Kernel before he started Neuralink. So going back to Facebook, this article was written to highlight a research collaboration between the University of California at San Francisco and Facebook. The main point of the article is to highlight that they can now help someone with severe speech loss type out what they wanted to say almost instantly simply by attempting to speak. In other words, UCSF has restored a person's ability to communicate by decoding brain signals sent from the motor cortex to the vocal tract. Facebook is going to use this research for development of non-invasive products. They even specifically say in the article Quote, to be clear, Facebook has no interest in developing products that require implanted electrodes, unquote. Facebook is not the only tech giant exploring BMIs. I predict companies like Google and Apple have realized the writing on the wall and are going to start investing more heavily in the space. Someone who seems to agree is founder and former president of Neuralink, Max Hodak. In a recent tweet, Max said, quote, there are probably only a handful of phone generations left. Eventually, it'll be all wearables and implantables, unquote. And technology YouTuber Sham Sefer replied with the question, quote, You don't think Apple will be making iPhones in 10 years? And Max followed with, I mean, they still make iPods, so who knows? But it will at least no longer be their flagship product, unless they somehow miss the category shift and get surpassed by someone else. And to me, the key words here are, quote, miss the category shift. In the longer term, maybe a decade or so, the mobile computer market as we know it is going to be a fraction of what it is today. Moving on to other Max Hodak news, back in May, Max announced that he was no longer at Neuralink. His departure left me with questions, and when I asked him to give a hint about what he's up to, he responded with, don't worry, I'm up to stuff. Smiley face. And right after, he followed with, science. It turns out his response was literal. In one of his latest tweets, Max said that he and a few friends started a new company called Science Corporation. In one of his writings on his personal website, Max explains some of the differences between science and engineering. He says the scope of what they're working on at science is smaller than building a BCI. He also says, quote, We believe we have a clear view through to a first big defining product, built on an overlooked technical approach, that hopefully we can deliver to patients in a timely manner, unquote. Then the statement that you're probably most interested in is Max's comments about his departure from Neuralink. He says, quote, As for Neuralink, I was being genuine when I said that I learned a ton there and remained significantly invested in their success. The truth is that it wasn't my choice to leave, and there was a lot left there I still wanted to do. But as usual, Elon was right. 
it was time for me to go. The background is complex, and in some sense, doesn't really matter. In what should be a surprise to no one, Elon is by far the most effective operator I've ever met. And the four years I had there were, in retrospect, the best education on how to turn difficult technical problems into businesses I could have possibly found. Going forward, though we both work with the brain, our goals are different. Science is not working on products that will likely be very useful for merging with AI, though that is a mission in which I hope Neuralink is successful. From a technology standpoint, what we are pursuing at science is quite different." Unquote. Although we may not find out the full story, I predict that there will be continued success for both Max and Elon. Now, before we get to the last item for this update episode, I wanted to share that Neuropod is hiring. I predict we'll continue to be in hiring mode for almost up to a year. Some of you may recall we've been working on a cartoon series for quite some time, and as such, we're now looking for voice actors who can do a wide variety of mostly male voices. We also have a variety of other open roles, some of which are Neuropod specific, and others are moderately related but mainly independent. And if you're interested, please go to our jobs page by clicking the link in the description. Okay, now back to the original programming. At the beginning of this year, Elon stated, quote, SpaceX is building a futuristic bar at the top of the high bay with 360 degree windows and a glass floor looking down on the rocket factory. He then followed it up by saying that in order to get to the bar, one has to, quote, catapult high into the air and land on the roof with a base jumping parachute. Unfortunately, Neuralink doesn't have as grand of a bar, but Elon did tweet out this dizzying look of a cool spot for employees to grab some drinks. He also followed it up by saying that it's inspired by cyberpunk. And lastly, I've been thinking about adding some simple trend tracking at the end of the update episodes, so we'll try it this time and see how it goes. This time, the Neuralink employee count is particularly interesting because there's been a downtick over the past month. On August 5th, LinkedIn showed that there was 187 employees. And at the time of this recording, on September 8th, there are 182 employees. I suspect that this is due to the typical Elon company protocol of making sure that every employee is performing excellently. It's no wonder that Tesla and SpaceX have had remarkable success. They have incredibly talented and passionate team members. And Neuralink's hiring efforts, however, have not slowed. They currently have 65 job openings on the company website. Some of the roles appear to be duplicate postings, so around 50 of the jobs are in Fremont, California. Yep, the same city as the Tesla factory. And around 10 of the jobs are in Austin, Texas, where you might have guessed is the closest big city to the Texas Terra factory. The company's also been gaining a substantial following on LinkedIn and Twitter. As you can tell, there is quite a substantial bump up following the April 8th release of the Monkey Mind Pong demonstration. My name is Ryan Tanaka, and I hope to catch you at the next episode. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in helping us grow Neuropod, please go to www.patreon.com slash neuropod, or clicking the join button below the video. Your support helps us increase the quantity and quality of our videos. Thanks again.